I was asked if I could make a mock-up of part of this. So I think you can see I've laid out the entire cross. This is the bottom section that's going to be walnut. It's the wider section. I've also drawn four arc pieces that will form the circle. Well, here's the completed mock-up. Uh, I think we next week we're going to take this over to the sanctuary, which is still just framed out. And hopefully I can hoist this with a little piece of string or rope uh, up to the height it's supposed to be so everybody can get a real good idea what this would look like in the actual sanctuary. Now I've taken the large walnut cross uh, model here and traced it onto a piece of quarter inch MDF with a white surface so I can see the lines. And I'll use this, I'll cut this out and use this as a template for uh, bearings on a straight cut router bit. I'm making the bottom layer of the walnut so I've cut away from the vertical part and I've made two side pieces that will go in here. I'm using my pattern to make sure I have them placed right and then I'll go ahead and do some domino tenons in here to attach. Now I'm working the top section. The top joinery is different than the bottom. In the top joinery each section of the four sections meet with a 45 degree minor cut, so a 90 degree angle on each section. They all meet in the center and so getting this cut right is really important. So I've laid out, very carefully laid out where the cut lines have to be on my template and then I'm transferring them to the vertical section. I'll do the same thing with the horizontal section. So I cut for two dominoes in each of the four joints using the big 10 by 50 millimeter dominoes. And then I cut these uh, notches for the clamps to come on so I get a nice purchase with the clamps. And uh, glued it all together at once so I can make sure that they all meet in the center. So I'm all done using the template for the bottom, the walnut cross. Now I need to use it for the top red oak cross. And that cross is an inch thinner all the way around. So I've taken my compass here and set it to one inch. And all I'm going to do here is just lean the one side of the compass up against the template. and trace down and there I am. I've got exactly one inch. Now it's time to work on the circle that goes around uh, you know, the cross part and between the walnut and the red oak cross. So I'm using red oak to do that and I've cut some pieces and I've uh, marked a rough outline so that the grain is uh, essentially you know in line with the axis of the piece and I'm able to make these out of single pieces of wood which uh, which is nice uh, saves a little time and and of course a little expense I've already cut using a 1 8 radius roundover bit all the way around the two cross sections. So I'm using a quarter inch ball nose to have a matching cove cut. So 
So at this point I've got the joinery done. So what I want to do is go ahead and drill the, the screw holes that I need to attach these pieces. I've got to sand the inside of these cutouts and so I'm using a uh, tool that uh, I learned about from uh, my good friend and a great furniture maker in Texas named Danny Camerath. And uh, it's called the uh, Guinevere sander. It's just a flexible shaft sander with an inflatable uh, end piece here that you can put your uh, sandpaper sleeve on. And uh, then you can just very easily sand these curves. The cross is going to hang on the wall of the church with uh, three one-half inch studs that come into these pillow blocks. These pillow blocks keep the back of the walnut cross one inch off of the wall so there'll be some shadow behind it. So I'm going to attach these pillow blocks with uh, heavy screws and glue and uh, to ensure that the cross doesn't uh, wiggle any uh, on, the, on the wall, for lack of a better word, I'm putting a pillow block on each end. These will not have bolts or anything through them. They'll simply be to ensure the cross stays parallel to the wall. I'm using shellac as the finish, and I always like to put the finish on before I assemble a piece if possible, and that way I get all the little, or all the little nooks and crannies and, and, and can sand them. I'm also being careful not to put shellac where I might be gluing later, such as where the, uh, the, the circle uh, attaches and where this pillow block that separates the two crosses attaches. I'm just using one pound cut shellac, it's very thin. I'll have to use a number of coats on this, but I've found it just makes an exquisite finish and that's what I want for this piece. This next part's a little tricky. I need to attach these uh, weaves and I decided uh, to come up from the bottom with an uh, inch and a half uh, stainless steel screw. Uh, to make this accurate I need to come up right where the highest points are and I'm going to connect in two points so that there's an ability for the wood to move. I'm also going to leave a slight gap on either end to allow for the main cross members to move some without trying to pop this off. So I've put some masking tape on the circle. And I'm going to go ahead and mark that and from that go ahead and mark where this hole should be and then drill a pilot hole down through come up from the underside with a countersink and then when that's all done I can place this back and mark where the holes need to be in here and try to you know not go all the way through because the object is to not see the screws so that's the plan let's see if I can make it happen careful. Now I'm trying to be as clever as I can be about the installation of the cross because if you remember there's threaded rods in the wall of the church that stick out and we're going to cut those off to about three and a quarter inches or so to allow penetration all the way through the back cross piece, the walnut piece, and its spacer blocks. It's set off the wall by an inch and also allow room to put some nuts on. I got some nylock nuts and the first thing I did was I wanted to have a washer against the walnut stuff so I went ahead and glued 
the washer to the nut using a little contact cement, just enough to hold it there. Next thing I did was I made myself a, a holder for the nut, kind of a wooden wrench that I can, I can put this nut into. It's got a little bit of springiness in it because I, I cut a kerf down here. And now that nut's held. And I can slide this in between the, the, um, the two crosses and get the threads to engage and give it just enough. Now what I'll do before I actually install the cross, I'm going to figure out where the nut actually starts to engage the threads. I'll get up on a ladder and do that and then I'll make a little mark on the side of the nut so I know how to align the nut when I first stick this in that space and start to, to tighten up. And with any luck it'll work and we'll get that started. And once that's started then I come in with a three quarter inch wrench and this is a steel wrench and I, I needed to make it longer to get into that space so I went ahead and taped a piece of scrap wood onto that and then I wrapped this with a paper rag just to make sure that there's no metal that's going to dent or scratch the cross itself. So the nuts weigh on the inside between the two crosses. I'll reach in with this wrench and be able to give it a, you know, a, an eighth of a turn or so each time, sixth of a turn. So let's see, hope, hopefully that'll work. With the help of my ever trusty tractor, I was able to get the cross into the truck along with a couple of saw horses so we're on our way to install. Well, that's it. All done. Turned out pretty good. And that's what it'll look like when everybody's sitting in the pews. Mm -hmm.